Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, once again, welcome to Industrial Talk, a platform that is dedicated to industrial professionals all around the world. I say it once, I say it a million times, you are bold, brave, you dare greatly, you collaborate, you solve problems, you innovate, and therefore you are making the world a better place. Thank you very much for what you do, and that's why we celebrate you on Industrial Talk. We are broadcasting from Reston, Virginia. It's a quiet place. You ever been around? Peter, you've been walking around? Uh, yeah. It's quiet. Bit. It's a quiet place. Yes, <laughs> it's I agree. a quiet place. And uh, we are broadcasting at OMG's Q1 meeting, and it is a collection of incredible, uh, passionate problem solvers that truly want to do what is great and wonderful, and uh, they, they talk way above mine. In a hot seat, you heard his voice. It's silky smooth. His name is Peter. That's, that's pretty much it. And I'm not going to pronounce his na- last name. Nope, 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 nope. How do you pronounce your last name? Evan Skolkvik. Yep, there it is. There it is. Now I have to, in my transcription, I've got to try to figure out how to spell that name. Anyway, you having a good uh, meeting? It's just starting. Yeah, just starting today, yeah. First day. Um, we're actually doing training on uh, next generation digital twins, so that's our first day for this. So before we get chirping on the... There's a periodic table out there. Yeah, <laughs> digital twin stuff. Um, before we get going on that, give us a little background on who uh, Peter is. Uh, yeah, I'm Peter Van Skolkvik. I'm CEO at Exxon Pro. I'm kind of the chief technology enthusiast as well um, in real terms. Uh, um, my day job is looking after the business, but uh, I'm also heavily involved with DTC, Digital Twin Consortium started the Capabilities Periodic Table, which we'll talk about, but I'm also chair for the Natural Resources Working Group, as well as the Composability uh, Sub-Task Group. Um, Yeah, just a number of initiatives. Uh, It's my passion. I I hope there's not a test, because every time I come to an uh, OMG event, there's just so many organizations, consortium, teams, whatever you want to call them, um, but they... They're just heavily involved in really debating challenges. And, and, and in this, the world that we, this industry right now, it, it, it's even more needed than ever before. I just, this, this pursuit of doing it right and figuring that out. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the, the opportunities and challenges is that the complexity is increasing. It's almost exponential. You know, as soon as you start with the basic digital twin and then you start adding intelligence onto it, AI, IoT, all those things, you just increase the complexity um, almost exponential. So if you don't work at standards and interoperability and all the good things that OMG and DTC are doing, then um, it's it will be really, really tough going forward trying to put these things in to get real business value because that's really what you would yeah, Yes, and I think I'm glad you brought that out because I, I just said if you don't do it right and people don't see the value, they're not gonna, there's, no gonna, there's not going to there's not going to be any adoption of it. They're going to just look at it and that's oh, why would I want that pain? Why would I want that aggravation? Who do I trust? Where do I go? Who do, you you got to get it right. You got to get it right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, people don't buy digital twins because they want to have a digital twin. They buy it because they need a business problem solved. They need ROI. Um, And it's also the reason why we came up with a technology agnostic approach like the capabilities periodic table, which removes the technology and, you know, all the things around it and really talk about what should it do. So take us through that. That's a good segue into, you know, what we want to talk about it. Uh, take us through what it is and then why it's it, why it's meaningful. So we started this initiative in 2022 um, in the Natural Resources Working Group. So most, mostly coming out of oil and gas and mining, really complex systems. Trying to explain to your boss I need budget for a digital twin, really hard because they want to understand the business value. <laughs> Um, so we had Amen. to we had to come up with a way to yeah. make it technology agnostic. Firstly, 
um, and also n not bound to any architecture. Uh, and it was really around what job am I hiring the twin to do? Um, and if that twin was a person, what skill sets would they need? need aka capabilities so we we then um, broke it into six main categories six areas and this is all downloadable from the dtc website so i'm not going to run through detail of it no 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 that's okay so, yeah, but it's so it's available it's available it's really available yeah um we started in 2022 um and it's been through a few iterations some large organizations have even adopted it as their corporate standard in terms of how they organize their um, business around digital twins in it and we've just released a version 1.1 update and looking forward to a version 2 which also incorporates some of all the new things like AI and Gen AI and you know, where the market's heading with this stuff. Why, why is it important? Why, what, I, I, for me personally, I, I, I'm always going to go to the business reason. Yeah. It's one thing to be able to talk about all of this wonderful innovation and technology that exists out there today and get caught up with the shiny object. But the reality is, is that it has to, it has to benefit me as a business and tell, talk to us about that. And that was one of the key reasons, again, why we created this. So when you, when you explained um, to an executive that I need a digital twin, you need to kind of break it down into what are the core things that from a capabilities point of view that we are going to achieve with that. So um, the, 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 um, the other opportunity that it gives us is also to look at what capabilities we don't have in our organization. So let's say we all want to do um, predictive energy for a wind farm. Um, it's going to need some AI. Maybe we don't have that in an organization. So if there's not a way that I can bring a multidisciplinary team, and that's the other kind of thing. If I've got a multidisciplinary team, no one agrees on what the thing should be. I, how do case. I get them to talk about capabilities rather than technology? And then you know, if we have it or don't have it, do we hire, do we partner? How do we go about getting that capability into uh, our organization? Again, removing it from the technology uh, conversation. And I can put it all on one slide for my CEO to show what it is that we're trying to do. How do, how do you come up with capabilities? What I mean, it's, it's so easy to talk about the technology. It's so yeah. easy to Google it and beam, boom, here it is. It's all great. And, and, but how do, you, how do you know what capabilities you need in an organization? Do you just sort of have a sort of a conversation around a coffee table and like, I yeah, wish yeah. it was that easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what we've done is we've created it in six main categories, and there are 62 elements in it, each one with a kind of detailed description. So if you look at um, data services or intelligence or user experience, there's some sub um, capabilities in there, and uh, there's also a format in the in the periodic table that helps you run through and say what questions do you need to ask. Ah. It's the ability to so describe to me. So when you're in a large um, uh, workshop setting, you can say, you know, um, describe the ability to, you know, have a gaming engine as a front end or uh, this, again. Um, or do data integration from my uh, IoT systems, or use a standard for 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 data management. But it's the description of the of the of the ab uh, ability, and it's done yeah. again. There's a there's a um, a format that uh, with with questions that help you derive for each of those whether it's applicable or not. So the ones are not just park them and just focus on the ones that you actually need. Trust is a big deal. Absolutely. Because <laughs> if I'm going to look at that chart, I'm going to, uh, it, it has to be predicated on the fact that what I'm looking at from this chart has been thoroughly vetted by a bunch of good people who are truly having that passion. And, and then I can feel comfortable in, in trying to find those capabilities. Is that... Yeah, so it, it comes from both industry practitioners have used this practically and also from um, members inside DTC, both vendors and again, uh, um, end user organizations. And that's actually why we have a version 1.1. There were some, some uh, combinations like AI and ML combined, um, but then also some new areas like responsible. So how do we bring in responsible capabilities? So how do we make digital twins 
that they are used for good and not for bad. So those are some of the um, feedback that we had. Uh, and also things like spatial data and uh, very domain specific things. Uh, we had some feedback around expanding that and improving that. Where do you see it going? I mean, you're going to come out with an, it, it seems like it's a document that is going to continue to just sort of evolve, grow, adapt to what's taking place. Yeah, I think that we're taking it in two directions. So the one is how do we expand it for emerging capabilities and technologies like Gen AI? I mean, there's not a conversation we in these days which is not about how do we bring it in. There's a lot of regulation in that area that's starting to happen. We see that with EU and other places. So that's the one area. But we don't want to keep it as a as a paper-based document. So we're also, also turning, turning it into a machine kind of readable standard um, so that you can plug it into a real system and it's not just a, 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 a paper-based exercise by a bunch of people sitting in rest in, 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 a, in, in a little boardroom. Which, <laughs> it, I, I, in, in talking to uh, David, um, what I can appreciate is I'm, I'm not a I'm not a software engineer. I'm not any of, I'm just a business guy, right? And what I can appreciate it is that with every system that I've ever tried to deploy, I was always looking for that simplistic approach. Make it as simple as possible to ensure that there's this adoption that happens and compliance and whatever all of the terms that are used to use the system itself. And what I heard him saying and what I hear you saying is that that's exactly what this chart allows. It just it's, it makes it more approachable. Is that absolutely um, the whole objective from the start was to put it on one page, firstly, so that I can explain it. I can get you just I, shrink it in size. I can, as just, well, as it, it continues to expand, you just <laughs> keep shrinking. And eventually, you'll need. A, yeah, it still needs to be readable <laughs> on, 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 on 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 one page, but um, I, I, and. No, that, that was a driver from the start. And also put it into plain, explainable language and don't, yeah. don't use complex word. And, um, you know, anyone should be able to read it and understand. It's almost like when you have a, a resume for a person. If you're hiring a twin to do a certain job for you, the resume explains what they can do in simple terms. So your resume for the digital twin should be in simple terms. <laughs> With all that said, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by what does your company do? We're a real-time digital twin platform. So we, we take data from real-time systems and um, create um, solution-based applications around predictive maintenance, uh, oh. predictive quality. So again, we're building digital twins that solve real problems. So that, that's why we started and kind of backed into the periodic table because the conversation always went to technology and we are, well, what's the problem that you're trying to solve and what capabilities do we need to do that? Um, so that's what Exxon Pro does. So uh, we work primarily in, in asset intensive industries like yeah. oil and gas, mining, yeah. energy utilities, all the big things. We're looking right. at the assets themselves looking and the health the of the assets, assets yeah. and then determining the failure rate associated with those yeah. assets. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because I'm a big fan of uh, asset management, reliability. I, I've had a number of those conversations and I, I can really appreciate that. Well, you are just absolutely fantastic. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, the easiest to get link, uh, to get hold of me on LinkedIn, um, Peter Van Skolpijk. Um, just get hold of me there. Thank you. I'm going to have all the contact information for Peter out there. That's so you don't have to worry about it. Just go out to Industrial Talk, and we're going to have this LinkedIn stat card out there. So you, you got to connect because it's all about education, especially today. Education, collaboration, and innovation. Whether you like it or not, it's happening. That train has left the station, and it's a bullet train whether you like it or not. All right. You are absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, listeners, we're going to wrap it up on the other side. We're going to have all the contact information for Peter out on Industrial Talk. As I said, we are broadcasting from OMG, rest in Virginia. This is the Q1 meeting, and it is a collection of people like Peter solving problems, making our lives better. They are the heroes in this story. Stay tuned. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. Your to-do list. 
One, reach out to Peter. We're going to have the all the contact information out on Industrial Talk. CEO of XM Pro. That's X-M-P-R-O. And uh, you will not be disappointed. We talked about Digital Twin. We talked about AI. We talked about the Digital Twin uh, periodic table. You need to implement Digital Twin. You need to be successful at it because it's important. He also has a book. I go out to his stat card. He has a book. It's called Building Industrial Digital Twin. Learn how to design, develop, and deploy digital twin solutions for real-world industries using Azure Digital Twin. Right there. Get that book, too. Be successful. We need you to be successful. All right. We're building a platform, Industrial Talk. You have a podcast, put it out on Industrial Talk. You have technology that you want to promote, put it out on Industrial Talk. That's what Industrial Talk is all about. Educating, collaborating, uh, and, of course, innovating. That's what we're here to for you. All right. Be bold, be brave, dare greatly. Hang out with Peter. Change the world. We're going to have another great conversation coming from OMG shortly, so stay tuned.